Hello, I'm M. Connors, owner of The Creative Bodega, and welcome to this Design School Lab. On today's agenda, we are going to talk about how I organize my Canva HQ, including my brand kit, my folders, and my brand templates. From there, we are gonna move into unlocking the secret to customizing templates with ease in a way that is gonna stop your ideal client's scroll. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about batching, how to say goodbye to overwhelm and hello to a streamlined content workflow with the help of Canva, of course. So let's start with step number one, organizing. This is honestly where the magic happens. It's not super exciting, but man oh man, can it make all the difference in the world when it comes to creating content for your business. So I love this quote, being organized is not about perfection, it's about allowing creativity to bloom. So when you have your files organized and your reusable templates at your fingertips, it's going to remove that distraction and that frustration so that you can really focus on creating beautiful designs for your business. So let's set up your personalized Canva headquarters. I wanna talk about some tips for leveling up your brand kit, how to streamline your filing system, and I want you to learn how to keep your go-to designs organized and at your fingertips. The entire goal here is to save you massive amounts of time and energy when it comes to creating content for your business. So leveling up your brand kit, I wanna share some of my best tips for setting your Canva brand kit up to its fullest potential, which will make customizing templates 10 times easier. So let's all open up our Canva brand kits and I will share what I'm talking about. So once you navigate to your brand kit, you are going to notice that the logos are mostly SVG files in this brand kit that we're looking at. And the reason for that is that if you download your logos or even any elements that you're using consistently in your content as SVG files within Canva with a transparent background, you will be able to change the color of any part or element of that logo right within your design, which is very, very helpful. If we move on to colors, something that I don't think a lot of people know is that you can have uh, gradients inside of your brand kit, which is something I am a huge fan of when designing. And I also really encourage people to have a primary and a secondary palette. And the reason for that is when you're using the styles button when designing, it'll help you out and I'll show you that in a little bit. Next, we're gonna move down to fonts. Uh, it used to be that Canva only allowed you to have three fonts, now it's eight, which I know can overwhelm some people, but don't feel the need to fill all of these out if it overwhelms you. I would just stick with your heading, your subheading, and your body font and call it a day. Next, we're gonna move down to the brand voice. I really recommend you add in your unique brand tone of voice in this section so that when you're using Magic Right, it is going to pick up on those unique characteristics and make it so much better using that. Last but not least, let's talk about photos. I feel like a lot of people don't realize that you can simply drag and drop an entire folder of photos into your Canva brand kit. You do not have to open a design and one by one add each photo. And if you add them to this section inside your brand kit, it is going to make customizing templates so much faster and easier. So just to review those Canva brand kit pro tips, I would love to see you save your logos as SVG files with transparent backgrounds to easily change their color while designing. Consider having a primary and a secondary color palette inside your brand kit and maybe even adding a fun gradient. And then bulk import those brand photos for really easy access when customizing your templates. Now let's move on to streamlining your filing system. So creating folders and subfolders will be a massive time saver when designing. I would love to see you come up with a folder hierarchy. So what does this mean? It means having folders within folders, right? I start with my business name, the Creative Bodega, very simple. My next level is going to be all those folders that I'm accessing that are quite broad, right? So branding, collaborations, courses, social media, and so forth. Once you click into one of those, for example, social media, I break it down into the type of posts. So carousel posts, list posts, quote posts, testimonials, and so on. And then you'll find one more level for me, and I go four levels deep. I try not to go further than that. It would be something like carousel posts. If there are many different types of carousel posts that you use, it might be helpful to create 
folders for each of those. So for me, it's Canva carousels, content or Instagram carousels, branding, and so forth. Let's take a sneak peek at my Canva folders. So when you navigate to the project section of your Canva headquarters, you're gonna click on folders. And this is where you're gonna have all of your main folders. And this is first level where I would have my The Creative Bodega folder. I would click into that and then you would see my next level of folders. Now something I wanna point out is you can star any of these folders and that is a huge time-saving thing that I do. So, and sometimes they're starred forever and sometimes they're just starred when I'm in the middle of a project or in the middle of revamping an online course of mine. When you star a folder and you go back to the Canva homepage, you are going to see those folders right on the left-hand side. Again, super easy access. So I have things like my real covers, uh, my social media posts, I have a membership and I keep that there, my podcast. So I keep all of those folders super handy. I think I have five or six, but I do recommend everyone do that. If you haven't already, go through and star folders that you want to appear on that main page. Really easy, if you change your mind, you're simply unstarring it and it's gonna go away. So file organization pro tips, map out your folder hierarchy according to what you're designing for your business. People do this two different ways. I prefer to start mapping out my folders and then filing, but some other people decide that it's easier to go to that design page, select their different files and start making folders according to what they're seeing inside of their whole design area. I would love for you to set a 30 minute timer and just file as much as you can. Honestly, whatever goes past that point, you're probably never using anyways, so I think you can just forget it. And then I would love to see you star folders so you can easily access them when you're designing from the Canva homepage. Step two, my favorite part, let's move on to design. So good design is not just what it looks like, it's how it works, okay? So it's not just about making something that's stunning, right, for Instagram. It is really about um, making sure that people know what you're talking about inside that post that's gonna make them stop their scroll. If there's too much going on, if it's over-designed, if it's overwhelming, they're gonna scroll past because their brain just can't decipher what the heck is happening. Let's find and customize Canva templates. I want to show you how I find Canva templates fast, how to customize them like a pro, and learn some design tips that will help your designs stand out online. I think that all begins with really selecting the best template to customize for your brand that you've got in mind. So I wanna share how I find these templates really fast and how I customize them effortlessly. Let's all head to the Canva homepage and I'll show you how to find the perfect template for your brand. So a lot of people start with this plus sign, the create a new design. I actually don't. I navigate right to the templates icon and from there I will find what I'm working on, which is usually social media posts. So I will go to Instagram posts. From there, you're gonna see this view of templates that's much larger than if you just create a design and they're all sort of on that left-hand side screen. Uh, I really like looking at this, at this view and I also like to put in very specific keywords for my template searches. So instead of just Instagram posts, I would say something like, uh, membership launch or just putting in some keywords to help Canva sort of narrow down this big overwhelming pool of templates even further. The next thing I want to show you is that when you find one and you click on it, you can scroll down and you'll see more like this. So this is one of my favorite features because Canva does such a great job of showing you additional templates with that same sort of um, with that same sort of feel or vibe below it. And I think that's really helpful for finding templates for your brand. The next thing is that you can follow these creators simply by clicking this follow button. And what that means is when you click on that templates button from that homepage, like we just did, there's gonna be an option on the left that says creators you follow. And then you'll be able to see all of their templates and designs and they have collections as well that if you like their vibe on one of their templates, you're likely gonna like the vibe on all of their templates. 
So template discovery pro tips, I want you to start on the templates icon on the Canva homepage and use the filters, right? Put in keywords that are gonna help you find them. If you have a certain size that you absolutely need, you can add that to the filter. Uh, I find that Canva's magic resize is so helpful and easy to use that even if I find a template that's maybe for an Instagram real size, but I'm using it as a normal Instagram four or five size, I can resize it and it still looks beautiful. Uh, utilize the more like this feature once you click on a template that you find intriguing and try to follow some creators whose styles you love and I like to stalk their <laughs> shops frequently. Now let's talk about customizing templates fast. So adding your brand colors, fonts, and imagery will make your templates feel so uniquely yours in just a matter of minutes. So let's all customize this Canva template together. You can go to that templates icon on that Canva homepage and search beige and pink neutral webinar training and you will see this exact template that we are about to customize together. So let's dive in on how I customize templates fast. To me, it's wild how simply applying your brand colors, fonts, and imagery can make two completely unrelated templates instantly look like they belong together. So I want to customize this with you and share some of the things I do to make this really effortless and really fast. So here's this great template from Canva. One of the first things I do and I teach all my students to do is to duplicate that template immediately. I'm not a Canva creator designer. I'm not. I rely on the amazingly talented Canva creators to make these beautiful templates for me to customize for my business. I know that if I make too many changes or stray too far from the original, it's gonna start to look a little off. And that's why I always make a duplicate immediately and I start customizing the one below it so that I can always refer back to the original to see maybe where I went a little too far off base. All right, so I know you all know exactly where your brand kit lives when you're inside the design Canva area, but I wanna show you a quick tip. I like to click on the background of the template, go into design and click on styles. Now I'm working with a very bright brand kit today, but if you scroll down, you can actually utilize any of these really unique combinations that Canva provides for you. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna click on that once and it is gonna apply all those colors and all those brand fonts to your design. If you have your brand kit set up to its fullest, this will obviously apply your brands and colors to the brand kit. And you can shuffle through, you see those two little arrows? You can just keep shuffling. I believe it gives you seven different options to choose from. And no, it's probably not gonna be completely perfect, but it's gonna get you much closer to the starting line than you realize. So from here, you're just gonna maybe swap out the photo to something that you prefer or one of your brand photos. And before you know it, this is going to look completely uniquely yours. One thing I do wanna call out is when you're working with a template, I would love to see you try to swap like for like. So if that template comes with a lighter background, try to, try to find a lighter background in your brand kit. Or if it has a certain specific font, maybe it's a serif font, or maybe it's a very bold font, maybe try to use one of your fonts that would most similarly match that. And same with the imagery. If it has a very close up image, Find something like that inside the elements and inside the photos, or if it's a person standing, like in the template that we're using, hopefully you have an image that looks similar to that, or again, you can easily find that within Canva. So template customization pro tips, I want you to always make a duplicate of the original before changing anything in that design. Start out using the styles feature inside the design icon on the left, so you can save a ton of time customizing the template, and then swap like for like. Use similar colors, saturations, font styles, and photos. Step three is all about batching your content ahead of time. So creativity thrives when you stop winging it and start preparing for it. So we often think of good content as the post itself, how it looks, how clever the headline is, whether it gets likes or saves, but that's really just the output, right? What really makes great content like consistent, strategic, attracts your kind of people good, is what happens before you even hit share. Batching content like a boss with a really solid system and framework is going to help save you when life is lifing and you have no time to create content for your business. You can honestly continue to show 
So part one in batching is nailing down a daily posting schedule. This is so you can stop reinventing the wheel. With a clear daily posting schedule, corresponding reusable templates to go with that schedule, you're never starting from scratch on a post, which we all know can take way too much time. It also helps build a cohesive, recognizable brand. So consistent imagery, fonts, and colors are gonna make you instantly memorable and recognizable to your audience. One of the biggest compliments I could ever get is when people say, I know it's your design before I even saw your name or who posted it, right? And then it also helps, it also helps establish trust and credibility. Having a defined style shows professionalism and a level of care and detail to what you bring to your business. So here's what a daily posting schedule might look like. So I break it down by day and then the type of posts that I'm making and then the goal for the post. So Monday for me is always a Canva how-to reel. The whole goal is to educate. Tuesday is going to be a carousel. I allow myself to choose a couple different pillars to fill this in. It could be content creation, could be Instagram, could be Canva. And that again is to educate. Wednesday could be a photo of yourself or a talking head reel with the whole goal to inspire your followers. Thursday, maybe it's a list post or a testimonial to educate and or inspire. Friday could be a meme reel to entertain. And Saturdays, maybe you're gonna promote your freebies or your courses, and that is all with the goal to convert your audience. Once I have that daily posting schedule, I'm looking at and deciding what templates do I need that, can I, that I can create to be reusable so that I'm not starting from scratch every time. And I know exactly what type of post I'm making for that day and where to find the template inside of Canva. So finding and customizing reusable templates is going to be a massive time saver for you. So the first thing you're gonna do is look for those templates within Canva, right? And then you're gonna customize them to your brand. Maybe you make them in a few colorways and you can cycle through those. And then you're simply reusing them over and over. Do I keep the same templates forever and ever? No. Every six months I get a little bored of one or a little tired or another template piques my interest and I'll completely switch. I'll retire one and bring the new one in. But having these at my fingertips is just massively helpful. So I wanna share how I batch my content. So the first thing I do is I figure out what day of the week I'm batching. So let's just say we are working on Tuesday and it's a carousel post. I'm gonna go directly into my social media folder and I know that all my carousels are there. Once I get into my folder, I'm going to have those reusable templates pinned to the top of the page. Now, if you didn't realize this, you can pin designs and what it means is they will show up across the top of the folder and everything else that is not pinned will show up below it. So let's just take this template that we were working on today as an example. To pin a design, all you're gonna do is click the three dots and you're gonna choose pin to folder. And now, just like I said, you're gonna see a pinned section at the top and then you've just got your items below that are not pinned. Now, if I'm going to use this template and customize it, I click on these three dots and I actually just make a copy. And what that means is that it is going to be instantly filed in that folder. And that is glorious. I don't know about you, but if I don't file something immediately, it's probably never getting filed. So that is a pro tip. If you go into the folder directly, make a copy of your reusable template, it will be automatically filed and you don't even have to worry about that homepage that I know stresses people out. So content patching pro tips, pin your reusable templates to the top of your folders for really easy access. Make your reusable templates in a few different colorways for some more variety and set aside one day a week to just work on that one post type instead of jumping around all the different days of the week. Once you get in the zone with that one type of post, it's going to make designing and customizing and batching so much faster. So what we've learned today, how to organize your Canva headquarters, including your brand kit, your folders, and your designs. I revealed the secret to customizing templates with ease and in a way that is going to stop your ideal client's scroll. And last but not least, we wanna say goodbye to the overwhelm and hello to a streamlined content workflow with the help of batching our content inside of Canva. I would love for you to follow me on Instagram for all the Canva and content goodness. I am Ann Connors from The Creative Bodega and thank you so much for being here with me today.